Hive Survival Games is one of the most competitive game modes on the Hive, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on one of the most key aspects of Hive Survival Games, which is cobwebs. Now while there are many different things that can help you be a better Hive Survival Games player, such as learning to combo and learning when to throw a nice place boombox, webbing is one of the most key aspects of becoming a great survival games player. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about different ways and uses to use webs, as well as at the end some tips on how to get a nice placed cobweb. The first use of cobwebs, which is especially useful for newer players, is to place a cobweb to trap an enemy player or an enemy team from coming in and attacking you. This is something you'll need to practice, especially as you run away from opponents, to make sure when you place it right below you, you place it to where you aren't going to get stuck in the cobweb as well. If you can successfully get a team in a cobweb, this will allow you to weaken the team through arrows or potentially separate them. You have to be careful when fighting a player, especially when you try to web them, to make sure that you don't accidentally web yourself. For example, if you look in this fight, we were using cobwebs in many different ways, but as my opponent was running away, he tried to jump to stop me, but accidentally trapped himself, and in the end, this led to his demise. The second reason you want to use webs is when you're either low health from a fight or fighting an opponent more geared than you. If you can get the opponent into a spot where you can lift them into the air and place a web underneath them, this will allow you to either bow them or get some distance so that you don't end up dying from the fight. The third reason you want to use webs is to separate teams. When an overgeared team comes after you, there is almost no way that you're going to win the 2v1 if you try and go in for trades. So the key is to separate the team. If you can separate each of the duo, you can get hits on each opponent individually and create yourself a better opportunity to end up winning the fight in the end. The fourth reason to use webs is to trap enemy opponents. One of the most common ways, and one of my favorite ways, is to climb up to the top of a ladder and place a web one block above where the ladder ends. This will allow you to hit the opponent freely in a way that they will not be able to reach you as your enemy. Another great way to trap is to anticipate your opponent's movements, whether through a teleporter or a launch pad, and to place webs on the other side. This way your opponent will get trapped and won't have anywhere to run. This also works for web boomboxes. As your opponents try to run away, if you throw a web boombox slightly in front of them, this will stop them in their tracks and allow you to catch them. The fifth reason to use webs is learning to clutch from a high height. If you get knocked off of a high height or jump down, all you need to do is hold down right click with webs in your hand and it will stop your fall. If your timing is correct and you place a web right before you land, you will only land in a one high web. This is a great opportunity for an easy escape if you break this web with your sword. Whereas if you hold down right click for too long, it will lay you in a string of webs which will be two to three high. And in this case, instead of trying to escape by breaking through with your sword, you will want to try to run out the side, as cutting through multiple layers of webs will take too long. While clutching, one thing to keep in mind is that sometimes the hive is broken and you still take fall damage from a web. Not only can a web stop you from taking fall damage from a high height, but it can also stop you from falling into the void. If you place webs against the outside of the map on the void, it will allow you to wait a long enough time to potentially last all the way until deathmatch, which will give you a second chance at scoring the win. The last reason I'm going to be talking about in this video to use webs is something I've noticed in the competitive scene. In a lot of tournaments, people use webs, in my opinion, to cause chaos. For example, in deathmatch, there are webs all over the arena, which allow players to catch their opponents off guard. Whereas if they were to take a 1v1 or a trade, it would be much more risky. Whereas if they can get them caught in a web, this allows them opportunities to get extra hits, which they may not have been able to get otherwise in this type of a competitive scene. I get Stone. Does he have more? He's got more webs. No, we got it. We got it. Little. Let's go. Let's go. If you were able to move around and avoid all of these webs that you place in these chaotic scenes, this gives you an advantage over enemy teams as they, while trying to run away, will end up getting stuck in webs that either they have placed or you have placed and will allow you to take the advantage and then take the win.
Another great way to cause this chaos and confusion in a fight is to target two people who are already fighting and throw a web boombox at them. This will lock them both in their place and allow you to come in and take the kills from each other. I would like to go over now a few different tips on how to become better at cobwebbing. The most important of these tips, in my opinion, is to establish a hotkey for your cobwebs. If you are able to hotkey to your cobweb slot quickly, this will allow you to time everything right in order to place a web directly under your opponent, which will effectively stop them in their tracks and allow you to kill them in many different ways. Another great tip which I explained earlier is when you yourself get stuck in webs, be sure to use a sword to try and break through instead of an axe or your hand. This will allow you to escape more quickly so that you are able to go and attack your opponent faster. Tip, if you yourself get stuck in a web and you are unable to run, instead of trying to sit there and reach with your sword, you should pull out your bow and attempt to have a bow battle with the opponent. If you have enough arrows, this can effectively lead you to the win, even if your opponent has you trapped in a web yourself. When running away from an enemy opponent, be aware when they have webs in their hands, as you can easily dodge the webs if you pay attention to what they have in their hand. There are a couple of different areas that are pristine areas to web somebody. My personal favorite is in the wide open. This will allow you to watch as they fall and to know exactly where they're going to land. Another one that I see a lot of professionals use is to push people up against a wall and then place webs. If you're good at comboing and can get people up in the air, this is a great opportunity to trap them in a way that they will not be able to escape, as falling from the webs takes a long time, especially when you're not on the ground and able to break those webs with a sword. Although there are many different things that affect your success with webbing an opponent, such as ping or other things related to the hive, one of the best ways to be good at webs is to practice. While you are first learning to web, a lot of times you will miss your opponent as you launch them in the air and you place a web below them. It is key to continue to practice this. Learning the trajectory of your opponent's fall will help you be more successful as you are learning and growing in your journey of how to become a webbing legend. This concludes my tutorial on how to web in Hive survival games. If any of you have questions, feel free to leave a comment or any other tips and how to become a better webber in Hive survival games. Make sure, if you enjoyed the video, to like and subscribe, as this video took me a long time to make and I'd love to make other videos in the future and your support is always appreciated. Love you all.